Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev. My name is Birigi. And today we have something amazing, something from Fuji Heavy Industries. But first things first. Let's check out the highlights of today's show. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev, in the market for a luxury car, we take you through our picks for the best used cars in that segment. We review one of the most popular cars in the Kenyan market, the Subaru Forester. The first generation of SF Subaru Forester was launched in 1997. It was based on the platform of the Subaru Impreza and was available with four engine variants ranging from a 2-litre petrol to a 2.5-litre diesel. In the year 2000, Subaru did a facelift to this first generation edition which came with a couple of new features. In addition to this, features that were optional such as cruise control were now offered as standard across the range. The second generation Forester or SG was unveiled in 2002 with a modern design theme. This new edition of the car had redesigned headlights, a chrome grille, upgraded bumpers and taillights. In 2005, the SG received a facelift, bringing sharper looks, new features and upgraded parts that improved its off-road capabilities. The rear suspension, the brakes and the steering were all improved. ABS, front airbags, and a manual transmission with hill hold assist were all offered as standard on this new Forester. The third generation Subaru Forester, or the SH, was officially introduced in 2007 in Japan. The design shifted away from a boxy look to a more streamlined, compact SUV design. This new Forester was available in two 2.5 liter engine versions and with two transmissions a four speed automatic or a five speed manual. The company also implemented many of the features that customers of previous cars had been requesting, such as Bluetooth support, a touchscreen navigation system, and surround sound. The fourth generation Subaru Forester or SJ saw a shift towards the model becoming a crossover SUV. The SJ has a longer wheelbase, granting rear passengers more legroom and more usable space. Subaru also developed the Forester with a new X-Mode all-wheel drive control system which controls the engine, transmission and center differential making this one of the most capable family vehicles off the beaten track. The fourth generation Forester also saw the introduction of the EyeSight driver assistant package to the model range. The fifth generation of the Subaru Forester or the SK was launched in 2018 at the New York International Auto Show. The all-new Forester claims to have better performance, better safety and lower fuel consumption than the previous generation with new hybrid technologies implemented in its engine and transmission for the first time. Question is, does it have a better value for money proposition compared to its rivals, the Nissan X-Trail, the Toyota RAV4 and the Mazda CX-5? Let's find out. So guys, step inside the cabin of this particular brand new Subaru Forester 2020 and I can tell you Subaru have done a lot. There's been a lot of evolution since the SF5 back in 1997 to now 2020. You can see the level of progression Subaru has done to redesign the Forester making it a formidable product. One that can fight the likes of the Honda CRV, the Toyota RAV4 and of course the Hyundai Santa Fe but before we go any further let's start with the design of this particular cabin now it's based on the Subaru vehicle architecture which is a global platform that lies also in the legacy in the forest and of course the Impreza now the advantage of having this platform it's wide and you can see the amount of space in this particular car is simply amazing even the design of the dashboard as you can see it's a two-tone design and of course it's a forward cab uh, type of setting that allows you to have that illusion of space in the vehicle and of course airiness you can tell that this particular car has a lot of space as you can see below you do have plenty of cubby holes and spaces this is a crossover the name of the game is 
practicality of plenty of cubbyholes and spaces you do have where somewhere you can put your phone. I think on the higher spec model, you can actually have a wireless charging pad over here. Um, and of course, you do have the gearbox console, which is standard. We're going to talk about it. The gear shift is a standard gear shift system. Of course, it's CVT, and we're going to discuss that later. Obviously, you do have uh, most space, you have cup, cup holders over here. And what what I've done, they have removed the traditional handbrake, and you do have the electronic park brake with, of course, a heel assist, which is standard. And of course, the 360 view camera that is now standard on this forest moving over to the instrument binacle, call obviously clear and precise um you have a digital display which is also monochrome at the middle of the two dials so speedometer and tachometer obviously and of course it gives you all the vital information that you need to uh when you're driving this particular car the steering is also fantastic three spoke and of course it has satellite buttons on the left hand side it controls the multi-information display on the right hand side you do have also the uh, cruise control functionality which is adaptive and all those lane departure warning cross traffic alert and everything else and then the best part where you can select uh, the driver mode so it's called Subaru SI drive so you can you have sports sharp intelligent and of course the other settings that you can actually toggle over to give more power and response and I'm gonna show you later on as I drive this particular car the seats fantastic very comfortable American size because this car remembers the design in the US for the US market so the seats are very comfortable the seats are heated and perforated which is very good and of course they're electronically controlled with three driver settings it's time for Mr. Murigi to give us the lowdown on the multi-information display, what it can do for you, and obviously talk about the practicality of the sitting space at the back, 60, 40, 40, 60, or 40, 20, 40, and at the back, how much this car can actually carry, um, you know, groceries, all the musicals as you go to Shags. Join Mr. Murigi as he's going to give us a lowdown of these features. So, first thing that you notice in this car is that the controls are physical. Now, a lot of cars have decided to go on to screens with everything being controlled in the screen. But I think primarily because this is a car that was built for the American market where they have snow and people will be operating with gloves. There are lots of buttons to control everything. So let's start now with power. They've done a very good thing because this is a car that's built for the new family, millennials. So they actually have two USBs in the front here and a 12 volt socket. Now, in terms of air conditioning, you have dual zone air conditioning. We have this beautiful 8-inch display, very clear graphics and very big buttons to touch because like I said, this has to be very easy to use while we are on the move. In addition to this 8-inch display, there's a secondary display at the top here. This display actually just shows things that are directly for the vehicle itself. So it will show the X mode settings, it will show what the eyesight system is doing and it will show things that the driver is adjusting. This is for the driver basically and this is for the passenger or for everybody else in the car. So looking at this system, it's a fantastic system that has smartphone mirroring. There's actually a Subaru Stanley app that you can download on your phone that helps you to interface with this. But if you don't have that app, you can actually plug in your phone over here on the USB and you have access to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which means that you can use Google Maps and they are fantastic and they are very accurate for any trip that you're doing. Now, in addition to all of this, you have the Subaru EyeSight system. Now, this is a system that I can actually just describe by itself, but it's a set of two cameras at the top here. And the reason that they have two cameras is the same reason your phone has two cameras so that it can judge distance. Now, what this system allows you to do is to do lane keeping assistance so it will keep you in the lane it has adaptive cruise control so it can actually speed up or slow down to match the speed of a car that's in front so let's check out the back to see what this car has to offer in terms of space for passengers and for the stuff that you need to carry coming around to the back of the subaru forester and the first thing that you'll notice is one of the changes in the generation between the last subaru forester and this one is that this one is a bit longer so the wheelbase is actually longer and this car is wider and that means that sitting at the back here is a breeze this seat is set to trevor's driving position he is six foot one i am five foot nine and i have loads of space for both my knees and my feet under here and this car is wide and very comfortable one of the things i like about this is how big these windows are they are set very low so kids should actually be able to see outside on long trips and there's loads of light available here this large panoramic sunroof brings in light to the back over here the, the all of the glass around here makes this a very nice place to sit now these leather seats are actually really nice and they're one of the features that come now with the high spec version of this extremely comfortable and something that i can definitely recommend on a long trip now in terms of storage you actually have door pockets over here that are large enough to hold a large bottle like one liter you have aircraft style seats but with other 
additional pocket so you can actually put your phone here and that phone is going to help you charge over here using the two usbs that are available for the back seat people here this being the top spec it also has air conditioning vents on the side here so that you can keep cool on a long trip and it actually also has two cup holders in the middle if you have two people at the back in terms of safety you have a full three-point safety belt at the back for the person in the middle and this place is big enough for an adult to sit in the middle and you also have isofix points for child seats but let's check out the boot to see just how much this thing can carry Coming round to the back of the Subaru Forester, and we have a powered tailgate that opens to reveal a massive boot capacity. This is 505 liters, making it class leading. It's actually the same as the Mazda CX-5, but bigger than the Volkswagen Tiguan. One thing I like about this is just how wide this is. Again, we are talking about this generation being wider and longer, and that wideness also is in the boot itself. Very wide, very easy to use, very flat. Now opening over here, we actually have some storage compartments and then under that, we have a full size spare tire. We come to the top here, we have tie down hooks, we have easy open pockets over here to make stuff go inside and this power tailgate actually has memory settings so you can actually set the height depending on where you happen to be so if you're if you're parking or you happen to live in a place where you're parking in the basement you can have the door open a little less than it would in other cars so loads of technology in the back loads of space but it's time for us to take this car on the road so let's see what Trevor has to say about that legendary Subaru driving experience We are taking a trip back to memory lane and we are talking about the Subaru Forester, a vehicle that has been in the market since 1997. Up front, we want to find out how much power this particular car has. So you have different derivatives and because the world is changing, there's also a version that has an electric motor, but that we're going to discuss later. But this particular one is a two liter, four cylinder FB20 engine that produces 115 kilowatts and 196 newton meters of torque that is sent to the four wheels courtesy of a six-speed Lineatronic CVT transmission. While you know I don't like CVT, but the name of the game is efficiency. And what Subaru have done is try to match the abilities of this Boxer engine and the symmetrical all-wheel drive with the efficiency of the Boxer and of course the CVT transmission, the X mode. And also it plays a big role when it comes to off-roading, which Merig is gonna show you uh, much later on. But what are the inherent advantages of having the FB engine. Remember, previously the Subaru had the EJ series. EJ series was an engine that lasted since from 1988 all the way to a few years ago. So it's an engine that has been tried and tested over the years. However, as times change and of course you need to have vehicles with direct injection, variable valve timing and all those things. Now, it's now part and parcel of that category where it's all about efficiency. So I've given you the brief discussion about what the FB engine is all about. So I've just pressed spot sharp and I can tell you the vehicle is really trying to give me all that power and I'm pushing it. Of course, if you have the XT version, which is a more powerful turbo version, you'll have more power and more grunt. But this one is more of a balanced vehicle. Now, there's one thing about Subaru that I like and it's the safety sense. Now, Subaru have actually invested a lot of money, millions of dollars to ensure that the Subaru family is actually safe. Starting with this brand new invention. It's not new, it's been there for about eight years. It's called eyesight technology. Now, basically eyesight technology is a summation of three or four systems that allow this particular car to have quite a number of features that are innovative and of course use adaptive AI technology, which allows this car to actually think and perform certain functions quite easily in as far as active safety is concerned. That allows this particular car to drive as a proper adaptive cruise control vehicle such so able to enjoy long distances. And of course, in case somebody just emergency uh, in front of you breaks very hard, then the vehicle will identify the distance between the car and the forest and of course it will apply selective braking to ensure that you remain out of harm's way. And obviously now, Subaru have actually now paired other technologies now. Let's start with blind spot assist. So if you're deviating from your lane, it will constantly beep and there'll be a signal towards the mirror just to show you that on this side of the lane, you are actually deviating from the desired lane to keep the vehicle straight. You do have cross traffic alert, especially when you're reversing. And of course you do have uh, emergency autonomous braking and emergency autonomous throttle damping.
if all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the multiple airbags i think there are eight in this particular car you have a five star safety rating on the cabin cell to protect you and your family and of course the safety belt which is the most important item in the vehicle safety is so important especially to crossover buyers it's time to go off-road now this particular car is famed for the symmetrical all-wheel drive and of course the boxer engine and of course the ground clearance is this car a good off-roader or can do maram let's join mr mirig and give us a lowdown on this particular car So now we are about to take the Subaru Forester off the road. Now this is going to be very good because it has 220 millimeters of ground clearance. So it has a very good ground clearance and it has that symmetrical all-wheel drive system. But what this car has is X mode. So what I'm going to do is press this X mode button in the middle here. And what it does is that it makes the center differential a little more aggressive. So this is a full-time four-wheel drive system. But when you're on tarmac, it tries to keep the four-wheel drive system in a mode that is the best for fuel efficiency. When I put it in this X mode, it now is optimized for off-road, for giving me the maximum traction in this situation. The second thing that it's doing is that it is actually changing my throttle input so that they are more smoother to get me into and out of places. And then the third thing that it's doing is that it has put the gearbox, that Neonatronic CVT, into a low-range mode. Um, something else that it's also done is that it has activated hill start assist and so right now we are about to attack this course I'm looking at my secondary drivers display here and we are off to go and so my foot is off the brake and the car has realized that it's on a slope it actually shows you this on this display over here and it has actually just taken me down that hill very easily now the track that we've chosen is a bit uh, difficult because this is actually a quarry this is a land this is mining that has been done and so there's a lot of loose sand and very many um, very many rats that are in here that are really sandy so this is the kind of situation where this X mode and this symmetrical oil drive is actually going to be tested pretty seriously because here it's very easy to lose traction but as what we are seeing right now this is just walking through this without any problem whatsoever. I have to say I'm really very impressed. The other thing that actually is making me very impressed with this car at this point in time, of course, is the suspension because I'm not getting thrown around as much as you would imagine. Now, a car that has suspension set up for tarmac doesn't usually do very well off-road and vice versa, but this seems to be doing a pretty good job of ironing out the the challenging parts of this track. Now, one other thing that this car has specifically is a surround view camera. So with the press of a button down here, I can actually see exactly what my outside left tire is doing. And that's in a very, that's actually a very good thing to do in a situation like this because I can't always see based on the angles. And some of these angles are a bit dramatic. It actually shows you on this display what angles you're on. Uh, so you might be going uphill and not actually be able to see past the bonnet. Although if you're doing any kind of off-roading, it is advised that you walk the course first. Usually when I'm giving these reviews, I don't say that you should take this car off-road. I say that you just take it slightly off the road, maybe on the way to the market. But this I can say without a shadow of a doubt that this can handle anything you throw at this. I think this is the only Subaru that's left that still has that little bit of rallying heritage. And that rallying heritage is coming out in how it's able to handle this off-road course here because this is very, very impressive. Wow, all right, we need to get back to work now. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> so let's take this to a small clearing <laughs> next to a river here. And let's talk value for money. So guys, we've tested arguably Kenya's favorite crossover, the Subaru Forester. And I can tell you for a fact, it does not disappoint. The combination of symmetrical all-wheel drive, Indiatronic CVT, boxer engine, and of course the eyesight makes it a formidable opponent. Now, how much does this car cost? Well, prices for the Subaru Forester start at 5.7 million shillings, uh -huh. but the car we've tested today has the eyesight system, and that comes in at 6.7 million shillings. Wow, and who are the key rivals of this particular car? Well, the key rivals for this include the Mazda CX-5, the Hyundai Tucson, and the Renault Collier. 
And remember, this particular car comes with a three year, 100,000 kilometer warranty. Whichever comes first, and of course, you can rely on Subaru Kenya's expansive networks with the dealers across the country. Well, that's it, folks. You think this particular car is better than the rivals? Send us your thoughts as seen on the social media channels below. And we'll get back to you next week with the results. Well, turning out, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Murigi. Drive safe and be safe.